Um, I would like to welcome Sheikh Ahmed Abdul Hamid, who was here previously. For those of you who were not here before, he is an expert in comparative religion. Um, very is a very he's a he's a common face in at Peace TV, um, and um, please do ask a lot of questions in regards to comparative religion after his session. Jazakallah khair. Wassalatu wassalam ala man la nabiyya ba'da wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbikum Allah wallahu ghafur rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I greet all of you with the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mashallah, you're all ready for the next day? Yes? You know, the best tip to reserve your chair is take your chair back. You don't have to worry about. Dear brothers and sisters, the subject that I would like to share with you is on the title, If You Know Him, You Will Love Him. And that is none other than our Habib, our beloved Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we study the glorious Quran, we find the best of creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are the humans. Allah Almighty says in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, Ayah number 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam," And we have chosen the children of Adam and have preferred them over the rest. So the best of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the humans. And the best among the humans are those men who are called as prophets and messengers. And according to the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were no less than 124,000 prophets and messengers sent to this world. And the best among all these prophets and messengers are 25 messengers, are 25 prophets mentioned by name in the Quran. Like for example, Adam alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, and on and on. And the best among these 25 prophets and the messengers are five messengers. They are called as Ulul Azm Mir Rasul. The best or the highest grade of the prophets and the messengers. And the best among these five are two, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, the Imam al-Anbiya, the leader of all the prophets and the messengers is none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the leader of all the prophets and messengers. That is the status that he carries in the house of Islam. My brothers and sisters, the non-Muslim author, he says, you must know this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, you must know this man. You may be an atheist or an agnostic or you may be a believer or in any of the democracy or any of the religious denominations that exist on the face of the earth or you may be a communist or the believer in democracy no matter who you are no matter what your social habits happen to be you must know this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the non-muslim author says you must know this man now why should we know about this man Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, we know that the world 
is passing through the turmoil, state of confusion, where morality has no value, human rights have no value, injustice is at its peak, terrorism is spreading, racism is spreading. In this time, we need a man, we need a hero, we need a leader whom we can emulate, whom we can copy, whom we can follow, whom we can believe, whom we can obey in this time. And history of the time will tell you that it was the darkest period in the history of mankind when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded to declare his message. The need was to send prophets and messengers from every corner of the world or send one mighty messenger, send one master messenger for the whole of humanity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he declares in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, Surah number 21, Ayah number 107, And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, except as the mercy for all the creatures. The subject is, if you know him, you will love him. We need to know what are the roles that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has played in order to understand with an objective that we may love him more. Let us see some of the roles that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has played. First of all, as the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received the prophethood at the age of 40. And by Allah, receiving the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, receiving the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not easy. Sometimes he used to sweat in the cold day. Sometimes he used to shiver. Sometimes the, the, the wahi, the revelation used to come. And the, in the form of the ringing of the bell. And that was the hardest and the toughest form of revelation that he used to receive. It was not easy to receive the Quran, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hash, Surah number 59, Ayah number 21, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلْ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِيًا مُتَصَدِّيًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ had the Quran was revealed on the mountain, it would submit himself, it would humble down with the khashi of Allah, with the fear of Allah. Let the men of understanding may reflect. My dear brothers and sisters, we have very easy job. We have the Musaf in hand. But have you realized? Have you realized? How Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received this revelation for over 23 years. Not a day, not a week, not a month. For 23 years he received this revelation as the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. With all this difficulty we have approached, we have reached to Quran. We have the access to the, to the Quran very easy. But the Quran... It came, it was very difficult. We have to value the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the messenger of Allah. You see, he was called as majnoon. He was called as a soothsayer, magician. He was called as a liar. Amazing. The man who was after all of them in order to save them. He was sacrificing, struggling, praying for them, crying for them. And they are calling in Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the magician, as the liar, as majnoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he declares, testifying, Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. By the favor of Allah, you are not a mad man. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
as a prophet of Allah, when he took up this mission, he was offered power, he was offered position, wealth, women, everything at the cost of losing his faith. But he denied at the cost of his faith. He was committed as a prophet of Allah, as the messenger of Allah, he was committed to his faith. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had no care for this dunya. Once Umar radiallahu an, he get into the room of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he came out crying, weeping, and said, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, you could have a better living than this. Seeing the marks on his shoulder where he used to sleep, the bed that he had with the dry date palm of leaves, dry leaves, which kept the marks on his shoulder. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you could have a better living than this. Look at the other kings, the king of Byzantine, the king of Persia. How are they living? You are the Rasul of Allah. You are the messenger of Allah. You could have a better living. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Radhi tu billahi rabba. I am pleased with what my Lord has given me. As a prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never showed attitude. He never walked on the face of the earth with pride. He never had ego. He was always simple, soft, humble. So much so that, that when anybody used to enter a hall like this, they used to ask, they used to ask, who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He was so common that he used to live with them, eat with them, drink with them, walk with them. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The status that Allah has given him. Still he was humble. He was a simple man as a Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, as the Nabi of Allah, as the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he commissioned his mission to deliver the message to the people of Taif. To the people of Taif. And on the contrary, the chiefs and the elite of Taif, they made this struggle to look after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to trouble him. Our Habib, he shed his blood. He was tortured, beaten up. Why? Because he was delivering the message. And there came the angel asking, seeking the permission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to crush those people between the mountains. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, leave them. Leave them. Perhaps their generation will come into Islam. And we know Taif is one of the beautiful cities of Saudi Arabia and all of them are Muslims. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was always committed as a prophet of Allah, as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was commanded to make hijrah, he left Ali and kept all the trust, the valuables with him, which the enemies kept with him. Can you imagine the leader, the man of this nature who kept all the valuables when he was making the hijrah, when he was migrating to Medina, he kept all the valuables to Ali so that he may return those valuables to those who are the owners of that. The same people who tortured, killed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions and, and the rest. My brothers and sisters, that was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the messenger of Allah, as an army general. As an army general, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us, he taught us peace is a rule and war is exception. 
He taught us peace is the rule and war is exception. He prohibits us to kill the women, the children, sick and ill people, the religious people of other faith who are not involved in the fighting. He prohibits us to spoil the natural resources, killing of the horses, spoiling the fields. These are the commands of the army general Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the husband. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the best of you are those who are the best with their families and I am the best among you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam though he was the messenger of Allah the leader the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always treated his wives with fairness, with justice, with kindness, with compassion, so much so that he used to work with them. That is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As a reminder, this is him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is how, if you know him, you will love him. My brothers and sisters, the investment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his wives was so much so that that Aisha radiallahu anha she narrates more than 2,000 ahadith the narrations by sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my brothers and sisters he had the best of character Allah commands in the Quran and declares وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ In Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the best in the stand of, of character. Once someone asked Aisha radiallahu anha How was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How was he? She said كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. His character his example, his life was like the Quran. Meaning that he was like a living Quran on earth. That was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was always kind, generous. He never kept anything with him. He always gave away. He always helped poor. He always forgave the enemies. He always freed the slaves. He always be compassionate. He always was loving to the children. He always were respectful to the elders. That was the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers and sisters, he's a Habib. And my subject is, if you know him, you will love him. And the condition follows. If you love him, you have to follow him. If you, love, if you know him, you will love him. And if you love him, you must follow him. There are certain qualities or the essential elements that we the Muslims need to have in order to proclaim, in order to prove our love for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, we need to believe that he was the last and the final messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala who came for the whole of humanity. We need to believe that we have to obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whatever he says as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul obey Allah and obey his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so if you really love him you need to believe that he was the last and the final messenger of Allah if you really love him you need to obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the scholars have said there is no love or the love is very shallow. It's very light. It's weak. If there is no following in the actions of the believer. Someone said, the love of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reflects in the actions of the believers. That is sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we really love him, my brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that we have to worship him the way he taught us. 
We need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He taught us. We cannot have any alternate way. We cannot adopt any other method other than the method of sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If we really love Him, we need to worship Allah the way He taught us. Because for the acceptance of the actions, there are two conditions. One is that it must be only for Allah. And the second, it must be in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So if you want your actions, your methods, your worship to be acceptable by Allah, you need to make sure that you have to line all your acts according to the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa My dear brothers and sisters, if we really love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we need to love him more than our own selves. You see, this reminds me the, the love of companions that they had towards sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once a man came to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, in this world, we see you, we talk with you, we roam with you, we walk with you, we eat with you, we drink with you. But on the day of judgment, in Akhirah, in the hereafter, you will be among the highest of ranks. We might not be able to get the opportunity. We might not be able to get this opportunity to be with you. And he showed his sadness. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not answer unless the wahi comes to him. And it says, you will be with those whom you love. The man, the Sahabi, had this urge that he said, Ya Rasulullah, when I'm with you, I'm like I'm forgotten the whole world. When I go back, I miss you. I love you more than my own parents. I love you more than my own families. I love you more than my own self. And this declaration, this claim was, is not like ours. When they said they meant it, they meant their love because they proved their love in their actions. So he said, you will be with those whom you love. So if we really and sincerely love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will be with him in Jannatul A'la. If our love is sincere. Abu Bakr is another example. The great example when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to migrate. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He decided to move and migrate. And Abu Bakr, he was uneasy. Because he wanted to join Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the permission was granted by sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Abu Bakr that you may join me. Wallahi, he said, this is the amazing moment for me. Mind you, that was not the entertainment journey. That was not the leisure journey. It was a journey of harm, warning and danger because the enemies were after them. But Abu Bakr, because of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted to join him. And there is another, another incident of a woman who comes after the war and asks, where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Even though she was told that she lost her father, her husband and her son. But she said, where is Rasulullah? Where is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is he fine? Imagine. Imagine the love that the Sahaba and the Sahabiyat had for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They didn't care about their fathers, about their children, about their husbands, or about their wives. Their care, their love, their respect, their honor was for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the deep love that they had for sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The woman was inquiring, where is Rasulullah? And unless she saw Rasulullah, she was not relaxed. But when she, when she saw, 
She then kept quiet. My brothers and sisters, the sign of loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam can be found very easily in the actions of the believers. We need to make sure that we uphold the real love, which is the most expensive thing for us, which is the part of our faith, Allah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين. You can never be the believer unless you love me more than your own fathers, your own children, and the rest of the world. My brothers and sisters, it is the dire need that we need to love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a practical sense, and the more you know him. You will love him, and the more you love him, you will, inshallah, follow him. The last days, I would like to end with this, my brothers and sisters. The last days of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thirteen or fourteen days before Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he goes to the pulpit and says, "The slave is given two choices." The slave used an analogy, an example. He said, "The slave has given two choices: one to be with Allah, or to be in this world." And he said, "The slave had chosen Allah." Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. He started weeping, crying because he got the sins that his beloved. His Habib, his dearest friend, his Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is about to leave this world. He started crying, and sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said to Abu Bakr to calm him down. He said, "If I had to take a friend other than Allah, that would be Abu Bakr." Fatima. She approached Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few days before, and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned something in her ears that made her cry, and then he mentioned something else that made her laugh. The first thing that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her in private is that I will never recover from this illness. So she started crying. And the second thing that made her laugh, he said, "You will be the first one who will join me in my family," and that made her laugh. The Sahaba said, "It was the greatest calamity. The death of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the greatest calamity, the greatest musiba that befell upon the Sahaba. The loss of sallallahu alaihi wasallam." It was the greatest loss because they used to love him so much. They had so connected. They were so committed with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They could not bear the loss of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anas radiyallahu anhu. He said the best day was the day when Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina, and the worst day is the day that he expired. Omar radiyallahu anhu. The strongest, he could not control to face the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. My brothers and sisters, remember, if you really know Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you will love him, and if you really love him, you will follow him. I would like to end the subject. With an ayah with which I began my talk, from Surah Al Imran, Surah number three, ayah number thirty-one, in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sets up this condition of following Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Qul, say to them, In kuntum tuhibun Allah, if you really, really love Allah, fatabi'uni, follow me, yuhibbukum Allah." Allah will love you. Wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum and forgive your sins. Wallahu ghafurur rahim. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is Almighty. He's oft forgiving and He's merciful. 
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين